the opportunities to see your sons play. Now we know and we're happy to be here today. We just hope you win. I talked to Steven in the offseason and the thing that impressed me, he carried his brother's football card, David, in his wallet. Well, that's one of his inspirations. Both of the old brothers are his inspirations. What is it about you two that keeps producing wide receivers as opposed to running back? When I was a kid, that's what I was. Nice to see you both. You look great in your line, I tell George with a little flip outside, kind of a help me out of this situation pass, and it works a bit. USC then got the ball back. And we're up to their good old playing again. That's a coverage sack for Illinois. With Illinois getting the ball back, this is a simple example of how stupid you can be if you play for the USC Trojans. George was in trouble, throws it, bing, right off the helmet of that USC moron. Oh, do you stink? Was that embarrassing or what? Let's take a look at that again on replay. There he is, that George is looking right into the sun. Look at the shadows. He's looking straight into the sun. It's a screen to the right side. He's trying to hit number 32, just throws it. Bing! Ha 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 Illinois gets the ball back after a USC field goal in bad territory, but Stevie Williams helps him out. Stevie! It's a big league throw by George, too. He had to throw that ball. Let's take a look at the throw and the catch, buddy. Looking into the sun, and he has to throw it over a defensive man, Colder, number eight. Watch this throw coming right at you. He's got to throw it over Calder. Watch the feet. It's a dangerous pass anywhere on the field. Especially oh, beautiful. Well, he's under. Um, keep our backs in and block every, most everybody. So. Well, you couldn't block most everybody in this play, QB boy. Bang, 90 mate. And the pursuit got it. Mo Gardner brought him down, but actually, Bob. So at the half, Illinois was down 3-0. Now yeah, let's pick up action from the second part of the game. It was then USC's ball to start off the second half. And basically they picked off right where they left off in the first. This guy thinks he can run, and buddy, it ain't gonna happen. And then USC perhaps makes their biggest mistake of the ball game by fumbling away this possession. Stop 
couple in the bowl game. Uh, starting tonight, he needed 23 uh, more to break the receiving career record of Eric Apple. And we got an outside linebacker that can get on this one inch and stop quick three step drop. Jackson had him for a second, but Jones makes it. USC then booted in its second field goal, and Illinois was looking pretty sorry, down 13 to zero, with 2.22 left in the third. Oh, ain't got a chance. Well, Illinois gets the ball back with 6.30 left in the fourth quarter. That's left in the game, still down 13-0. Illinois all of a sudden starts to move the ball. Three All-Americans, just an outstanding defense. And then it happened. Illinois, in one of the best touchdowns I have ever seen in the history of Illinois football or football at all. Here it is. Pick up the call. to run out. I had to skip over a lot of other things that happened. But this is it, folks. Almost no time remaining. Illinois with one last chance to win. You see the time. USC still ahead by six. Can they do it? cat don't tend to wander. He's all the time crossing back and forth on that route. His luck will run out. Well, we're sorry about that interruption. So anyway, it's first and ten. Green Bay has the ball. Green Bay at the at Green Bay's 47-yard line. And they couldn't really get too much started here. Little pitch play. Takes that game about four. So then Green Bay, first and ten. No, not first and ten, about second and seven. Drops back. Torpedo shot. Great catch, but it is called back because of a penalty, and Green Bay is forced to punt. And as you can see, the score is still Green Bay 20, Minnesota 7, with 5.16 left in the third. 
the running game continually doing damage, just punching holes in that Minnesota defense, or whatever you want to call it. Then after a shot, <coughs> Green Bay hands off and takes a nice little run there, about 15 yards, but not, not good enough for first down. And then once again, we're sorry, but we have got to show this on the reverse Green Bay cut. And it's a strong for, uh, for Minnesota. It's kind of sad, but the extra point attempt makes it 14-20 Green Bay. But Green Bay, after receiving the kickoff, gets the ball at their own 31, drops it back, big wind-up, big throw out past the 50-yard line down to Minnesota 45. It's caught Green Bay first down by Morris. And once again, at the end of the third quarter, Green Bay 20, Minnesota 14. Minnesota then continues with the ball on second and nine. And Green Bay pressure just relentless. As you can see, he's forced to throw under horrible pressure, bad pass, and complete. And as you can see, there's even pack fans in Minnesota, folks. And then there was a safety, <laughs> and which made the score 20-16, but Green Bay saw the lead. So then the Packers get the ball back with about 10 minutes left in the fourth. Risher drops back and throws to Summers, who dropped the pass earlier, well, makes up for it here and gets the first down. So with just a little time left in the fourth, about eight minutes or so, Green Bay can't get a first down and must settle for a field goal by Max and Dejas, his third from about 30 yards out, making a 23-16 pack. Now this has got to be the most crucial part of the ball game. It's 23-16 pack. Minnesota, after receiving, just now receiving a punt from Green Bay out of their own end zone, uh, has the ball at the Green Bay 37. And there's about two minutes left in the game. Let's watch. Throws, completes it, and they get it down to about the 18. Now as you can see, a minute 25 left in the ball game. He rolls at the sneak. He could go all the way, but he doesn't. Stop by the last man, and they get it down to the eight yard line with a minute 15 left. Now here we go, folks. A minute 10 left in the game. He drops, he throws, it could be thrown in for a touchdown, and it's intercepted by number 47. He takes it 71 yards before being stopped by number 49. Incredible run, intercepted. Green Bay sits on the ball for the rest of the game, and these guys are yapping it up here, folks. Final score, Green Bay 23, Minnesota 16. And of course, we need to take one more look at this, folks. Boom, intercepted. You see, he could have taken it all the way. He was ahead of everybody. If he would have had a little bit more speed. Look at number 45. That was a good run there, trying to catch him. But it doesn't matter. This game's over, folks. As you can see, the best play of the game there. At number 47, intercepted the cornerback. And once again, the final, Green Bay 23, Minnesota 16. This has been a presentation of the R.E.K. Later, after, after the game, we talked to Green Bay um, scab quarterback Risher, and this is what he had to say. Uh, yes, uh, we did play very well, I think, against uh, the Minnesota Vikings. And I think that, you know, my quarterbacking could lead Green Bay to uh, perhaps another championship, even. Um, we won the game 23 to 17, I do believe. And yes, it was a very good game. Uh, Minnesota played tough, but they were just not tough enough. Uh, as said before, Green Bay did have some of these players uh, in training camp, and they were cut. So many of them knew, you know, some of the plays. But that is just a cheap, cheap, cheap uh, remark, you know, to to cover up for Minnesota's great, devastating loss. So there you have it directly from the big man, the quarterback, Risher, for the Green Bay Packers. Next, we will have for you Illinois playing at Illinois against Ohio State. And that will be coming up right after these messages. We interrupt the regularly scheduled program to bring you this special R.E.K. weather report. We're sorry to have interrupted the regularly scheduled program, but torrential winds 
winds and rains have affected the weather in southwest Florida. As you can see, the wind much a factor here. Um, the rain might not look like too much from the average person's standpoint, but uh, it's been falling for, you know, about a, a day now. And as you'll see here, the flooding has definitely taken effect. As you can see, this is built up over a period of time, and you can just hear the rain being slashed in. Look at this. The wind has picked up tremendously, and this is what you, this is the definition of a tropical storm. I mean, the wind, I mean, look at the wind just pelting against the, the side of the fence, and the flooding has been a factor. Might not look like too much to you. Well, it should, but, uh, it's been going on for quite a little bit of time here, and as you'll see, the buildup over in this area is extraordinary. So, we will try to keep you up to date um, on the new outcome of the weather. Right now, it is approximately 10.30, and the storm, the main part of the storm, was not supposed to um, hit us until about 2. So. You know, if this is the, just the minor effects of the storm, then um, it could get much worse. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Jim. Um, and yes, we will keep you up to date on the progress of Floyd with winds up to 85 miles an hour. Thank you, and keep it tuned. This has been an RK production. Illinois 30 or so and as you can see Illinois defense just could not hold it as you can see easy first down for Ohio State at the Illinois 20 and he gets a lariat call there too so then after a few skimpy running plays Ohio State on third and one decides to run it again see on the wishbone and they get the first down down to the Illinois 10 or so so they run the ball a little bit more take the take it down to about the Illinois 5 or 4 or 6, whatever. And Tupa just outfakes the Illinois defense, runs it in, touchdown, and it's 7-0 Ohio. But on the kickoff, they get okay um, field position, a bad kick. It's fielded, and as you can see, they can't decide who's going to get the ball, but it's fielded and taken out to about the 34. Scott Moore, the Illinois quarterback, decides to go to the air on first down, and Ohio then takes care of him from there. And after another unsuccessful running play, it brings up third. And as you can see, Scott Moore can't hold onto the ball at the sack for Chris Fieldman. But after um, Illinois punted, they get the ball at about Illinois at 40 or so. And I'm not saying that the defense was totally helpless, as you'll see here. Good pass protection there. So then Ohio State is forced to punt, and Illinois picks up the ball at about their Fifteen and a nice little running play takes it out to about the 23. Illinois then looks to the ground again to get a first down. So Illinois, after um, Ohio State got called for, no, after Illinois got called for pulling, they decides to run the ball, and they fumble it <laughs> at their own 20-yard line. Ohio State recovers at about the 22. So the first quarter ends, as you see the final second tick off, um, Ohio State 7, Illinois nothing, and as we get a nice shot of the Memorial Stadium. So Ohio State can't get the first down and they let Matt France try for the field goal. Illinois trying to figure out what to do in a field goal situation. <laughs> All doesn't matter. It's up and it's good and brings the score to 10 to nothing, Ohio State. And again, we get a quick little shot of the field there in the line I land. So Illinois then on second and 10 from their 18-yard line. They look to the air after receiving the kickoff from Ohio State. And number 44, I don't know what his name is, takes it for a first down and down to the 40-yard line. But unfortunately for Illinois, that play was called back, and they run a couple stupid running plays, and they end up punting. Poor punt, and it's fielded at about the 48 of the Illini. So then on third and six, after a couple running plays, a defect, deflected pass forces them to punt. So then Chad, Chad Little is sent in to punt for Illinois after they can't get a first down. Didn't we just see this a minute ago? Yeah, except a little bit better punt this time. 
and Illinois stops it there. And now we'll bring you this um, college football flashback. When Mike White took over as the football coach of the Fighting Illini in 1980, everybody expected some passing, but nothing like the Ohio State game that year. Quarterback Dave Wilson threw for six touchdowns, 621 net yards. The yardage total is still an NCAA record. Game at Columbus, the Buckeyes won 49-42. First and ten from the... Um 40-yard line, they go to the running attack and gain a couple yards there. Next play, trying to get the first down, it's a breakout run down to the Illinois 38. So then after uh, making it fourth down, they put Matt Franson in there trying another field goal. It's a horrible kick. It's no good, and the score remains 10-0 Ohio. So then Illinois not being able to get anything started from their own 40-yard line, nice throw down to the Ohio 40-yard line, first and 10. So then on third and 11, oh, you're in the grass, buddy. Sorry, you can't throw. And they're forced to punt. And now we bring you another college moment. Welcome back here to Champaign, Illinois. You know, one of the things that makes Memorial Stadium so unique was that it was constructed in 1923 as a memorial to those Illinois men who gave their lives in World War I. Each of the 200 columns that support on the east and west side of the stadium is engraved with the name of an Illinois war hero. Incidentally, the game was the stadium was officially dedicated a year late, October 14th. And so we get back to the game then. It's first and 10 Ohio from their own 15. The running attack just killing the Illini. First and 10. But not to say that Illinois defense was left out with 439 left in the second quarter, foot pass, and he stopped. So Ohio punts, it goes into the end zone, it starts off at the 20-yard line of the Illini, and they could not get anything started. So next thing you know, the Illini are punting. Pretty good kick, good hang time. And it's fielded and ran back to about the 40-yard line. So, Ohio State takes over at their own 40, throws, and it's complete down to the Illini 40. But it's sack time for Tufa as he gets tripped over and then fumbles the ball, but is luckily recovered by another Ohio State player. So then, immediately following the sack, down at back there 50, he sidearms it because he's under pressure, and it is intercepted, and then ran back to about the 35. Illinois then goes to the air again. It's complete, taken out to about the 32. So then after an incomplete pass, Scott Moore goes to the air again and completes it to about the 43. Scott Moore goes to the air again and completes, and the ball is taken out to about the Ohio 48. Down 33 seconds, they run the ball and get a first down down to the Ohio 40. Pockering and Gowan in the second quarter, he throws again, completes down to the Ohio 36 or so. So then on the last play of the half, quarterback in trouble, Moore's in trouble, spins away, pitches the ball. Can he score? Can he go all the way? No. And the half ends with the score, Ohio State 10, the Illini nothing. And beginning of the third quarter, Illinois takes over at the 20. It's third and 10. One of the better Illinois passing plays drops back, throws first and 10 Illini. But then on the next play, Moore in trouble and it goes down. But Illinois is not done yet. They get sacked and put back at the their own 25 yard line. Moore rolls back, steps off to the side, avoids an oncoming tackle, that makes a beautiful throw, and then look at the run here, boom, good block, and he has it way down to the, almost the Ohio 40 yard line. Then after one unsuccessful running play, which brings up second and 10, Moore drops back, looks downfield again, throws, and it's hard to see, but it was completed down to the Ohio State 33 yard line. Illinois brings in Brian Minkhausen, who loses four straight downs and forces Illinois to punt. Ball goes into the end zone, Ohio State takes over at their own 20 yard line. After one unsuccessful running play, they get another. Illinois defense swarms. 
making it third down. So it brings up third down, same sort of play handoff, and gets stopped again, and they're forced to punt. Elmoy regains the ball, and Minkhaus, and still a quarterback, takes over at Elmoy 38, and after one other successful running play, they get another one, first and 10 line. Elmoy, after getting a first down, takes over at their own about 45 or so. They drive back. Oh, he's got a man on, but can he go all the way? No, he's cut down at about the 50-yard line. But then Illinois having more offensive problems on third and six. And this is kind of hard to see because it's in the shade end of the field. But it is intercepted. And Ohio takes over the ball at their own 33. So it brings up third and 12 for Ohio at their own 30. They throw along. It's almost intercepted. But in any event, they are forced to punt. So Scott Moore checks back in. And on second down, he throws. And it's complete, making it a first down. And this is just a little special event for you. Watch this. As you see, it's an eye. Boom. Is that, is that neat or what? Well, in any event, let's get back to the game. So on first down, Moore rolls back, throws, completes for another first down down to the Ohio 36. So on first and 10, they drop back again. It's completed down to the Ohio 28-yard line. So then Illinois, after making it fourth down, tries a field goal, and it is no good. It is way off to the right. No good. It remains 10-0 Ohio State. Horrible kick. It should have been an easy one. So Ohio State, after moving the ball quite well down to the Illini 30 or so, drops back to pass. Illini defense does a great job here. Pops the ball loose. Then hit back is down to the, about the 50. Struggle for it, and Illinois recovers it at the 50-yard line. So then, Illinois, on the running play reverse, takes it down to the Ohio, almost the Ohio 30-yard line. As we get a look at the cultured crowd in Illinois. There's the Ohio State coach. And so it's fourth quarter, and it's first and ten for Ohio State as they line up. They keep it on the ground, and it's fumbled with a great hit, and it's scorched loose there. Illinois recovers at their own 35 or so. Then Illinois takes over after a couple running plays at their 40-yard line. Throws great catch down about the 25. Then Illinois takes over at 12-yard line. First and 10, drops back. It's up in the end zone. Touchdown Illini. But now watch on the extra point. Something must have been wrong. Illinois kicker again, misses, this time missing an extra point. Last time he missed a field goal, but that's right, you missed it, sucker. So, Illinois loses the game by a score of 10-6. to 6. And um, thank you, Bob Lee. That was Bob Lee reporting on the, Green, or on the Illinois Ohio State Buckeyes game. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the first ever show of the Green Bay and the Illini football wrap-up. So join us next week. I'm Ryan Kelly. Thank you and good night. This show is producing and once again from R.A.K. Studios, this is Hal Wright saying good night and join us next week for the second week of the Illini Green Bay wrap-up. Thank you and have a nice night. Welcome to the Green Bay Illinois Wrap-Up Show. With your host, Ryan Kelly. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly, and welcome to the Green Bay Illinois Wrap-Up Show. Not too much to report on this afternoon. Uh, Illinois did not have a game this week, so no action to report from them. But Green Bay did, and let's pick up the action with our friend and colleague back in New York. Now, the winless Lions were in Green Bay, the regular players in this game as well. The longest rivalry in the National Football League, nearly 36,000 at Lambeau. 
like a three-decade wait to get tickets, and there's a replacement photo saved with their souvenirs. Alan Fisher sat some six times, but the Packers could not pick up the blitz. They created field goal from tied at six and six fourths quarter. Fisher to John Summers, the Pack late the game, leading at 13 to 16. Fourth down, the Lions perhaps their last chance. Todd Hahn to Daryl Bryan, touchdown, and we're tied at 13 apiece. Six minutes to go in the game. Detroit had a field goal, and then Max and Dejas at the gun. 45 yards away for the Packers. We go to overtime where the Packers are no stranger to that unknown territory. Four minutes in the OT. Detroit kicker Mike Pringle missed the 42 yarder moments before, but he connects from 31 yards away. This comes after two consecutive penalties against Packers defensive back Chuck Washington. Check the waiver wire Monday morning. The final 19 to 16, the Lions with their first victory of the year, so they are now one and three, and they're one and one since the start. Uh, as you can see, Green Bay having a real bad week at home against Detroit, losing to the Lions by a score of uh, 19 to 16. That'll make Green Bay's record uh, one, two, and one. So Green Bay not exactly starting off too well, but one win, two losses, and one tie. That's it for this week's wrap-up show. Next week, um, Green Bay will be facing the Philadelphia Eagles, and Illinois will be facing Wisconsin. So join us next week. This is Ryan Kelly saying goodbye from the Green Bay, Illinois wrap-up show. Thank you, and good night. program has been produced in company with Payne Weber, hoping that y'all, your investments need, investment needs will be met with approval. That's Payne Weber. Hi, and welcome to the third week of the Green Bay, Illinois wrap-up show with your host, Ryan Kelly. Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly, and I'll be your host for the Green Bay, Illinois wrap-up show. Week five of the uh, National Football League pitted the Green Bay Packers against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, um, we could not get last week's show to you, so this is two weeks that went by, two games have been played, and uh, we'll just tell you last week's score was Green Bay 16, Philadelphia 10 in overtime at home, and this is what um, Risher, Green Bay's um, uh, yes, we did play very well against um, Philadelphia. It was a away game, too, so it made it very difficult um, for us to, you know, compete. But we did fare well, and in overtime, you know, I threw a touchdown pass to um, Don Jehusafats, and um, it gave us the win. And I realize this might be my last week playing scab football, but um, I'm glad that uh, the Packers gave me a chance to come on and um, start as quarterback for these very pleasant three weeks. Well, unfortunately, Illinois did not fare nearly as well losing to Wisconsin at Wisconsin uh, by a score of 14 to three. Okay, now this week's action, the end of a strike, big news, big headlines, the strike is over, so we will now pick up Green Bay and Detroit, the second game of this season. In the first game, as you already call, Green Bay lost in overtime by a field goal, 19 to 16. This time it's a little bit different, and we'll join Bob Lee in the New York, New York studios. Bob? Lions, and if you remember the last time they met at the Silverdome was on Thanksgiving, one of the one of the most enjoyable games of the season last year, and today was a lot of fun also. It was kind of the same thing. Silverdome, not been uh, a big place to watch football lately. They had more than the uh, replacement games with 27,000 in the Silverdome. means like friends and relatives showed up. Don Bukowski wearing, yes, of course, number five, as the pack leading 7 0. Hits Walter Stanley, and he could go all the way. Had a big game in Thanksgiving last year on this field. He goes 70 yards on this one, 14 0 pack very early. Just over five minutes left in the first quarter. Kenneth Davis, TCU, turns the corner. He could go all the way. 28 yard run. It's 31 7. Packers in the first half. He had 129 yards in all. The Lions, Darrell Rodgers, looking to pick grass out of the AstroTurf. It was that bad. 
but Chuck Mugabra is more with Davis scoring again, 28 yards, and now it's 31 to 7. It is a roll. But Chuck Long says, we've had enough. A guy who was very quietly had a nice first three games, receiver Pete Manley of the Lions. Touchdown, 31-14 Packers. The kickoff after the touchdown. Watch this. Walter Stanley catches it to one. Whoop, 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 whoop. Don't do it. Don't. His knee is down. Eddie Murray knows the rules. Folks, that is a safety. And how do you think Boris Gregg thought about it? You think he's listening to Stanley there? He's as we're sorry, we've seen the lost footage on the tape. We we're trying to get parts of the Chicago Green Bay and the Tampa Bay Green Bay game so we could show them. But anyway, Green Bay in what would seem to be week seven, no, week six, um, holds on to a win 34 to 33. They did come back in Detroit. Detroit did come back, and uh, they just could not pull it off. The big game in Illinois, which we do not, sorry, have footage of um, from uh, homecoming in Illinois. Illinois versus Minnesota. Illinois wins 27-17. to 17. Uh, No telling what their record is, folks. They've been having a bad year. They're not going anywhere. Now let's uh, take a look at um, the Green Bay Tampa Bay game. Okay, we'll pick up the action in the first half where it is 0-0 um, zero, zero in the first quarter. And as you see, Green Bay stopping them to a run and almost forcing a punt, but they get penalized on the next play. So then, on third and three, DeBerg drops back to pass, and he's under pressure, throws, and it's almost intercepted, but it is dropped, and it'll force Tampa Bay to punt. So then, after this punt, Green Bay will take possession, as you'll see Walter Stanley receiving the punt, faking out a few Tampa Bay guys and going down, I guess, at around the 30-some yard line. So then, Green Bay attains possession at the 33-yard line. It's um, uh, the quarterback back to throw. Throw is complete to the 50-yard line to Walter Stanley. But Tampa Bay now setting up a successful running game, taking it down to the Green Bay about 30. But it is now the end of the first quarter to score Tampa Bay 0, Green Bay 0. Tampa Bay thought it had things going all their own way in third and one, but they could not get past the big guy, Brian Noble, number 91 forcing them to kick a field goal and making it three to nothing Tampa Bay. So then uh, on a succeeding kickoff, it's Brent Fullwood in the backfield to take it. Green Bay is number one draft choice. He does a pretty good little running job. Taking it out past the 30 to about the 32. Now this play right here really makes me smile. It's third and three. McCoskey drops back, fakes up the whole Tampa Bay defense. Just runs for the first down, gains about 20 yards out to the 51. So Green Bay, after having the punt, gives it to Tampa Bay um, at about the four-yard line. They cannot get anywhere, and now we will watch Igwe Wike try to kick it out of his end zone. And you see a little statistic on him. Just barely gets it off. It's almost blocked. It's a whole poor punt, though. But it takes a little Tampa Bay bounce, and then it's picked up, and now look at this. He touches the ball, and Tampa Bay guy almost falls on it, but Green Bay will stick with it and get the ball. But now take a look as they say Tampa Bay has retained the ball, and it'll be Tampa Bay's ball going the other way. So this is the play that really helped Green Bay. After Tampa Bay gets a successful throwing play, they look to throw again on first and town. 10 at almost the 50 yard line, throws it up, intercepted by Jim Bob Morris, who takes it all the way back to the Tampa Bay, uh, let's see, the Tampa Bay 35, 33 yard line, great play, and they're joyously celebrating in Green Bay. So Green Bay, after taking it all the way down to the goal line, fumbles, Tampa Bay recovers, but the Green Bay defense will hold still along the goal line of, um, they're on boom, taking them. I thought it should have been a safety, but they ruled them by out to the one yard line. So then Green Bay forcing a third down play out of the end zone. It's up, it's bobbled, it's bobbled. It's incomplete, forcing Tampa Bay to punt. So that forces Tampa Bay to punt. It's another horrible punt by, by Frank Garcia. And Stanley will let it go out to about the 38 yard line before touched by a Tampa Bay guy. So then. 
Tampa Bay gets the ball on third down after Green Bay gives it up to him. Third down, looks back. It's batted down by Robert Brown, number 43, and they will force them to punt yet again. Now, this we really had to show. Mikowski, with only 30-some seconds left before the half runs out, um, on first and 10 from about their own 48, He's been faking him out all day long on the run. We didn't show some earlier ones, but now look at this one. Boom! This must be about a 20-yard gain. Takes a tackle and goes for another couple yards. Great running by McCoskey, taking it down to the 29. So Green Bay takes it all the way down, only to miss a field goal from some 40 yards out, and that will be scored the half, three to nothing, Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay, on the first possession of the second half, takes it all the way down to score, making it a 10 to nothing lead over Green Bay. So then Green Bay, being the sorry team that they are, after getting the kickoff from Tampa Bay, fumble it. It is taken back in for a touchdown, not on that same play, but by a, a pass play. It's 17 to nothing. Then Tampa Bay kicks off again. Uh, Green Bay can't get the first down and end up ends up punting in or out of the end zone. That's Bracken punting. If he had a good one, as it'll be fielded. And taken out of bounds. Even though the offense couldn't get things going, the defense did on second and nine. To Berg back to throw gets sacked down behind the 40-yard line. So Green Bay, after holding them on third down, Let's him kick a field goal instead, and now it is 20 to nothing, Tampa Bay over Green Bay. So after finally uh, noticing that Mikowski is a major loser, Green Bay puts in Randy Wright, my personal favorite quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, and on the first play from the scrimmage, first and 10 from the, from the 25, he drops back and throws complete out to uh, Davis at about the 35-yard line. Now on third down... Randy Wright drops back, under pressure, steps up in the pocket, throws complete, first down, and a little bit more even, to Walter Stanley. Then on first and 10 from about the 50-yard line, Randy Wright jumps back to pass and completes it to Ed West, who takes it, just bulls over a Tampa Bay defender down to about the 35. Then again, out to Ed West for the second time in a row, takes it down inside the 30. Right. So then Green Bay on second and 10, right drops back, throws complete to Walter Stanley down near the goal line. So after stifling penalties, Green Bay is forced to go for the field goal, making it 20 to three. So then on third down, DeBerg back to pass at the Green Bay 30, thrown and boom, it's knocked away by the, the Green Bay uh, safety. Beautiful play, forcing Tampa Bay to go for a field goal. Tampa Bay successfully makes the field goal, getting punting to, or kicking off to Green Bay, uh, giving them the ball to their own 30-some yard line. Boom, but it's caught by Ed West, or Epps, I mean Philip Epps, and taken down to about the Tampa Bay 45. Great play on first and 10. Then, on the next play, Right back to throw, finds Frankie Neal, down at about the 30-yard line. Then, um, reaching third down, it's thrown to Philip Epps, who makes a beautiful catch for the first down, down to the Tampa 20-yard line. And now I'll take a look at how good the Gr Green Bay um, offensive line really is, pushing and shoving, and it's bye-bye time for Ron Holmes. So, Green Bay looks to the air again, it's back. It's thrown to Frankie Neal, who makes the completion down about the four-yard line. Then on the next play, right jumps back. It's thrown. It's touchdown, Green Bay, inside to Frankie Neal once again. And that makes the score 10 to 23. Then on second down to Bergback, fakes the hand. He sells the ball to Bamo. He's sacked down there. It's all over Harris with the great sack down back to the 25. So Green Bay on second and 10, right jumps back, pulls inside, boom, it's caught, and taken down to about the 43 yard line by Frankie Neal. So then on first and 10, right jumps back, throws again, this time complete to pass, get way down to the Tampa Bay 24 yard line, and Green Bay is back in this game. 
Then with time ticking down, right drops back, and this is a crucial play. It's thrown, it's incomplete, but Pat's interference on the play gives Green Bay the ball off the goal line. Then Green Bay looking for it all. They drop back, hands off to Brent Fullwood, who gets hit at the line, but boom, it's touchdown. He works his way in, and now let's listen to the crowd. But Green Bay could not hold on, losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, dropping their record to 3-3 and 1. That uh, score 23 to 17. Now we go back to Ryan in the REK studios. Blows yet another game. At this point in time in the season, their record is 3-3 and 1 with losses, uh, the first loss to the Los Angeles um, Raiders, and then they dropped one to Detroit. They've been dropping them all over the place. Uh, their next game, however, was at Chicago, or it was at Green Bay against Chicago. Um, perhaps uh, many have been calling it the biggest game of the season. McMahon is now back after being body slammed in the last uh, match. So um, we'll go up to Bob and uh, see what's going on up in Green Bay. Okay, thank you, Ryan. I'm up at the studios in um, Naples, Florida. At this point in time, it is 7 nothing Chicago. Green Bay takes over third and six from their own 33. And let's see Randy Wright really let the wing dinger go here. Now we'll listen in. Boom, inbounds, and it's first and ten Green Bay. So we'll pick up the action on the next play. It's up. It's to Ed West. Caught as touchdown Packers as it becomes... Seven to seven. So Chicago then gets the ball first and ten after twenty. McMahon drops back and he goes down to the mat. Alfonso Carriker takes care of him. Alfonso Carriker was the first man in Green Bay. Now watch this. This is the power of Green Bay. Boom! Just knocks the Chicago receiver down, and it's over. So then on fourth down, Chicago is forced to punt, and then Walter Stanley will take it at about his own 38. And he almost breaks it here. Gets stopped, stopped out around the 50. So then, after some um, unsuccessful plays, Green Bay is forced to punt. Chicago takes over third and 10 at their own 28. McMahon drops back and throws right into the arms of Tiger Green, intercepted. He takes it back. He does a good job of eluding tacklers. Crowd goes crazy. So Green Bay takes over, drops back. Right drops back, throws. Ed West wide open, takes it way down to the two-yard line. Green Bay's back in business. So Green Bay has it second down. They give it a full one. He's up, he's over. Touchdown, Green Bay. It is now 14 to nothing. Then, with only about 11 seconds left in the half, Randy Wright and his Packers have the ball to their own 28, or at the Bears' 28 throws. Epps caught in the end zone, touchdown Green Bay, and Green Bay will go into the half with a 20 to 13 point lead over the Chicago Bears. Uh, Chicago having scored a couple of field goals in the, in the last few minutes here. But Green Bay will be ahead at half. So, as you see, the Packers at halftime, 21 to 13 over the Bears. So then, Green Bay maintains the ball after uh, the beginning of the second half. Wright looks at second and 15, throws complete to Epps at the 50-yard line, first and 10. Now, this is one of the more interesting plays of the second half. Green Bay slow with the ball, hand out to Brent Fullwood. Perry, now the whistle blows right about there. Takes it, now look at Fullwood, boom, you're going down to the mat, bud, you're gone. And then some, some exchange, word exchanges between uh, the coach and, uh, not the coach, but one of the defensive coaches, and uh, William Perry. William Perry, of course, the fat lard bucket, number 72. Uh, let's just see that again. As you see, he's getting taken out. Taken out. Now look at, look at, forward. goodbye. Boom. Perry must have left an indention mark in the ground there. Uh, so let's continue. 
So then on third and 16, Wright drops back, throws, finds Frankie Neal, who gets the first down and more down to the 15 yard line. Then on the next play, caught by Davis, down to the 10 yard line. But Green Bay cannot get anything going, so they have to settle for this field goal, making it a 24. Oh, they missed the field goal, so it is still 21 to 13 in favor of Green Bay. So Chicago then striving, they get the ball down to the Green Bay 45, and then Bamo, the defense, caves in, and they lose five on that play. Chicago does. Then McMahon tries to play a little tricky thing here, and throws it up in the end zone, and bam, it's almost intercepted. But they don't catch it anyway. With the score, Green Bay 21, the Bears 13. Chicago, after scoring a touchdown, making it 20 to 21, Green Bay gets the ball, and as you see here, makes the first down down to their own 31. Then Green Bay gets it third and 18, and just cannot quite get it, so they're forced to punt to Chicago. Chicago then marches down, kicking a field goal, and getting the lead to 21. So then, on the kickoff, goes to Brent Fullwood, number one draft pick of Green Bay. Takes it. That is on five. Slips a few tackles. And takes it way out there to about the 40-yard line. So then, on third and three, Ray drops back. There is complete to Epps, who fakes out all three of those bears. And gets a first down, down to about the 47-yard line. Then Randy Wright drops back, throws to Davis. Davis breaks the tackle and takes it down, almost first down, as the clock ticks down. So that brings up third and two, and Fullwood, they give it to Fullwood, and he gets it, and more, first and ten. Then Green Bay forced to try a field goal to go ahead. Del Greco, it's up. It's good, and now let's listen in. Chicago has the ball on the Green Bay 35 yard line. It's third down and 10. Now watch this. They say this is not an interception. McMahon drops back throws. It's picked off. He's on the ground. It's intercepted. But they say no, it's not an interception, giving Kevin Butler a chance to kick the field goal. They do kick it, and Chicago goes on to win a disgusting victory 26 to 24. So. <laughs> I tell you, that officiating, officiating call, horrible, that really disgusts me to see that happen. Uh, not, not only do I think it was a bad call, but I think that Green Bay should have won that game anyway, and by more points, they lucked out with penalties. Chicago really, all in all, lucked out. They, they did not deserve the win. Now, I'll get you caught up to date. Last week, Green Bay played Seattle and lost to Seattle. Their record currently, right now, we've gotten you totally caught up to date. Their record right now is 3-5-1. and one. Now, today they go in against Kansas City, and later on, um, we'll I'll try to get highlights from the uh, ESPN pregame show. We'll send you up there with Bob, uh, up there, um, Bob Lee in ESPN Studios. They play Kansas City, and then they have a rematch. This is next week. They have a rematch against the Chicago Bears. That should be one heck of a game. I hope um, we'll be able to get footage from that. It'll probably be on TV here next week. It's going to be such a big game. Uh, but today, Green Bay versus Kansas City, and uh, right now it's about 2 o'clock. Uh, they, they've probably already started, but we'll try to get highlights for you for 
for you later on today. So, um, for Ryan Kelly here in the studios and Bob Lee in New York, uh, this is uh, the pregame show or whatever you want to call it for the Green Bay Packers and the Fighting Illini. Saying goodbye, and we'll see you later on with highlights. Okay, so we're going to send you to Bob Lee in New York, and he'll tell us what happened in the Green Bay Kansas City game. We take a look at the Packers and the Chiefs. Let it be known that they were not exactly packed into Arrowhead Stadium today, as the Kansas City Chiefs were trying to avoid their ninth straight loss. And they're already thinking of the draft in Kansas City. This guy's trying to light up with the paper bag on his head. It's gotten that bad. Hey, see, things are not up to date. First quarter, Don Mahowski. I told you to have a big game with Max McGee. All right, I lied. Keith Pasquette was the guy that he was looking for early. But Pasquette makes the reception 41 yards. The Packers are down to about the one yard line. The penalties back them up to the 20 yard line. Now they're third and goal from the sixth. Mahowski gives the ball on Karuth. And he scores. It's 7-3 pack at the half. Early third quarter, Randy Wright is now in the game. And watch this reception, though, by Frankie Neal. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Third round draft pick from Fort Hayes State, Frankie Neal. Fort Hayes State is in nearby Kansas, so maybe he had all the tickets that belong to him in the crowd. On the kickoff, Zendeha squips it. Aaron Pearson tries to pick it up. He fumbles. Packers have the football. It sets up Randy Wright. And he knows a good thing when he sees it. That's his rookie, Frankie Neal. This is 26 yards against the Chiefs' pass defense, my goodness. And the Packer backers, well, you know, they went south for this game. And so in Kansas City, they found the weather just marvelous. And you take a look at the Packer backers. Yeah, there it was. Another day at the beach as uh, Green Bay goes on to humble the Kansas City Chiefs. 23-3. to And now we'll go back to the studios to catch you up on more Green Bay Packer backer games. So, Green Bay um, defeats Kansas City away at Kansas City. And that will bring their record to four, um, four, five, and one. Now, they went into Chicago for the second time this year, as you know. Uh, their first meeting was the last second field goal by that uh, dork, uh, what's his name, Butler, something like that. Anyway, um... They lost uh, this one to 23 to 10. We do have footage of it. It was a pretty good game, and uh, I don't think we're going to have time to show it because it really was disgusting to defeat. Then they played at home against um, San Francisco, and they also lost that game 12 to 23, 23-12, whatever. Uh, that was uh, they started Mikowski instead of uh, Randy Wright, which I think is a mistake. I think that Mikowski is a dumb Pollock. Anyway, so that brings their record to four, seven, and one. Now they're third in the division, following uh, Minnesota, who is one, two, three, four, five, who is seven and five. Now today they go. Uh, Minnesota goes into Green Bay, into Milwaukee County Stadium, to face the Pack, and this could very well answer the wild card situation. At the moment, the first quarter has just ended, and it's seven nothing Minnesota off of a 40-yard completion by a. Uh, Kramer. So later on when we get footage of that, um, we'll have it here for you. So um, this is Ryan Cully, and we'll send you up to Bob Lee in a minute here to get the final. The NFC Central, where the Green Bay Packers have shown a lot of guts on defense, but they don't have a lot of show for it in the W column. Into town today came the Minnesota Vikings, and the Packers were trying to avoid a clean sweep at home. They hadn't won a home game there all year, although they were in Milwaukee today. They were 0-6-1 and at home, and yeah, it was a little bit chilly there, and Tommy Kramer made it even more chilly for the Green Bay Packers when he found Anthony Carter for a long bomb on a touchdown, 17 pass of the year for Carter. Kramer, though, would have to leave late in the second quarter with a hurt neck. Randy Wright brings the Packers back. He drops back and finds his tight end, Ed West. Go West, young man. Had a big day. 41-yard gain. The Packers in business. This sets the pack up inside the five-yard line. Brent Fullwood, the goal line runner, was not there today, but Paul Ott Carruth goes up and over, and we are tied at seven at the half. After a field goal by each team, that's right, Chuck Nelson did kick a field goal to tie it at ten. In the fourth quarter, Randy Wright to West again. And this one will be 33-yard pickup, and the Packers trying for the win. Third down and goal from the seven, a minute 14 to go. 
Dennis Davis is in, and number 36 will find Paydirt. Touchdown, they missed the extra point. Scantly over a minute to go, it is 16-10. The Packers leading the Vikings. Vikings on fourth down. Shades of last week, they give it to the same guy, Darren Nelson, up the middle. The pack stacks him up. Tim Harris, Ezra Johnson, Alfonso Carriker, and the Green Bay Packers finally win one at home, kind of, in Milwaukee. And they've tried so very hard, and they get through in the W column today. The Packers beating the Vikings 16-10. to And actually, the Minnesota Vikings, first of all, it puts their playoff uh, chances on hold right now in the wild card. But also for the Packers, as far as Greg wanted intensity this year, he's got at least that. Well, he has. And, uh, it's a little unfair to say they, that they haven't won at home because they tied Denver at home. And they, they also played the Bears in that game where Kevin Butler made the miracle field goal. Uh, the, the Packers play people tough at home. This week, the big question, Walter Stanley was the latest Packer to have a run-in with the law. Would the Packers have a Walter Stanley hangover, which I'm sure isn't too pleasant to have. But on the other hand, what turned out, I think the Vikings had a Jerry Burns hangover. We've seen it in Cincinnati all year. When you lose confidence in your coach's decision, it's tough to rebound. And today we have an epic thriller. Once again, it's back part five, as you recall. Last time we had um, my little cousin in here, eighth grader now, um, Mr. Jones. Me and him did a very good job on, on the feature. And today we have John's son Steve here, and he did a earlier spy thriller. Uh, we think this one will even be better than that, and perhaps better than the one that JW and I did, which got five stars. So we'll bring it to you here in a minute. <laughs> Christmas Massacre. Wow. We're going to have a good time at Camp Crystal. That was a great idea for Christmas, you know? Yeah, I think we'll have a good time. Yeah, this is neat. I wish we couldn't have, could have gotten an airplane. You know, I don't... Well, you know, bus, we have to go someplace. Well, uh, there sure isn't too many people on this bus, you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that's kind of strange. Passengers, we are now arriving at the Happy Time Bar. You all may stop and get refreshments. Oh. Oh. Well, Uncle, can I please go up and, and see the front of the bus, please? Sure, Keith. Oh, good. Uh, hey, Gus, your shift's over. Oh, okay. Thanks, Dan. Wow, this sure is a neat bar, Uncle Roger. Yeah, sure is. Wow. Oh, if you want to go to the bathroom, you better go now, because you're not going to have another chance. Oh, oh, okay, let's see if I can find it. I think it's over here. Hey, stay on, uh, you better get back on shift there. Okay. Ah, oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. What can I get for you? Um, can I have seven up, please? Uh, let's see, yeah, we got some left here. So is that your bus I see out there? Yeah, sure is. Yeah, you heading out to your little friend there, I saw. Yeah. So, that, so where are you going? Oh, we're going to Crystal Camp. Crystal? You're, you're going where? To Crystal Camp. Oh, my God. You haven't heard what's happened. You didn't hear what happened? What What happened? Oh, geez. There, about eight months ago, there was this massive slaughter. There must have been eight, ten people that got killed. No. I'm not kidding. Oh, geez. I don't believe you're going there. Well, has anything happened lately? No, but I'll be right there. Um, no, but I wouldn't go there if you paid me. Well, I think it'll be okay now. Uh, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm coming. Wow. What were you talking to that man about? Oh, we were just talking about how great Crystal Camp's going to be. Oh, has he been there? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, well, that's... I guess he's talking from experience. Bus 73 to Crystal Camp is not a party. We better go. Ah, we we must hear. Hello, I have reservations for two. Ah, uh, okay. Um, under what name? Um, Smith. Smith. Where's your second party? Um, he is outside looking at the decor. You can say. 
Hmm. Looking at the decor. Um, Smith, was it? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have reservations. You don't really need them. Only you and I think two other old ladies are here. Yeah, we've hit a business slump in the last year or so. But uh, right this way, you'll be in room 103. I'll take your baggage. Okay. I'd like to welcome you to Camp Crystal. And I okay. hope your stay is enjoyable. Well, thank you. Here, this is for you. Yeah, you have a good night, too. Wow. This is a neat room, isn't it, Uncle? Yeah, sure is. Oh, I've never seen one of these before. Mm. Wow. Sure is neat. Mm. Oh, look, Uncle. Look at all this neat stuff in here. Boy. Keith, you better put that away. It's getting late. We're going to go to sleep. But, but I don't want to stay up. Come on, we're going to have to go to sleep. Okay. Gee, I hope we'll be safe here. Oh, it's killing us. In the morning, at the restaurant. Hey, do you think you can hurry up? Because we're going to go to sightseeing and we're kind of late. <laughs> yeah. I think this is your slop. There you go. Come dig it up. All right. You, you think we can get this to go? Because I'm going to be taking up my room. Can I listen to this thing too? Okay. Um, that's fine. That's fine by me. Excuse me. There you go, just, there you go, that'd be 10 bucks. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it ready. I have, to, I have to cut it up there, Alice. I'll get it to you in a minute. Guess I'll just use this. Okay. Oh, wow, neat. These kids, you can't control them. They just run away.
boy, that sure was weird, wasn't it, Uncle Roger? Sure, but don't worry about a thing that happens once in a million years. You, uh, want some, uh, lunch? Dinner. Dinner, whatever. Don't contradict me. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Roger. Yeah, yeah I'll have a hamburger. Hamburger? All Can right. I come? No, no, no. Stay here. Don't. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Making the bed? I should not be making the bed. The maid should. And where is that Gladys? Gladys? Gladys, hurry up here. Gladys! Gladys! Gladys, get out of the shower, Gladys! Gladys, where are Boy, he's been gone an awful long time. I better go and look for him. Downstairs, in the bar. Wow. Hello. Hello. What's your name? My name is Joey. Hi, I'm Keith. Hello. Uh, oh. oh, sorry, I just went to the bathroom. Oh, that's all right. So, what are you drinking? Oh, it's, um... Vodka or gin? I can't remember. I don't. Here you go. To your hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I better be going. I'm looking for my uncle. Are you seeing him around? Does he have a big nose? No, he's fat. Does he have a big nose? No, he's fat. No, I have not seen him around. Well, okay, I'm gonna go look for him, but if he comes by, you tell him that, that Keith is, wants to see him, okay? Okay, you bye, 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 bye Keith. Bye. Now, I wonder where that bartender really is. <laughs> I hear it. Hey. Policeman, where are you, Mr. Mr. Policeman? Are are you in here?
about us even at all, Raphael. School will be fine. Don't you worry, just get the good grades. This woman is crazy. I heard from my friends last year. She, she beats people. No, no, they're just trying to scare you to make you nervous about for the first day. If you just stick to your grades, get on the good side of your teacher, everything will be perfect. Don't worry. Beep, beep. Now you run off to school, little boy. Go, go, go. Bye, Mom. Goodbye.
I went to his house yesterday. Uh huh. We were gonna play a game. What kind of game? Right. And he wasn't there. His mother was worried. She didn't know where he was. Hello, I am 
This is what it is. And hello. Can um, I sit? Yes, please do. Um, what seems to be the problem? My son, Rafael Rodriguez. Yes. He did not come home from school yesterday. He didn't? No, he did not. Well, do, was he um, maybe he had other plans with a friend or something? He was not home last night. He did not sleep in his bed. Where is he now? Well, your son is not our responsibility. Was he supposed to stay after school? Yes, he was. Well, we have had complaints about this teacher. Complaints? He was worried about the man. Said that, that he was evil. You let a man teach who has had complaints? Yeah. Back in Cuba, they let no man under 50 teach. And he had to have the best teaching record. This is America, miss. What kind of school elastic system do you have here? Well, we have had complaints, as I was saying. Maybe we should go check him out. I think we better go. For Rafael. Oh, that's OK, miss. Back in the classroom. Don't me. Don't me. Don't me. And so ends the teachers' conference.
Okay, here. Oh, let me just get you up here on the bed. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. Sir, I'll leave your key right here on the dresser. Okay, here. Buy yourself something. Thank you. Have a nice day. Meanwhile, in F4. Uh, I'm getting hungry. Hope the kitchen is still open. The next morning. Oh, thanks, Scott. So. I'd like to order um, some breakfast. Okay, what would you like? Um, two coffees, a bowl of Rice Krispies, and some eggs and bacon, please. Thanks, Hi. Hi. Hi, Joe Maxwell. John Fink. So, have you been here long? Just got in yesterday. Oh, me too. Have you gone swimming yet? Mm, not yet. Looks like they got a nice pool out there. See, they got a jacuzzi, too. How's the food? Good. Real good. We're having our honeymoon. Here you go. Thanks. Well, uh, nice knowing you. Yeah, nice knowing you. Thanks. Kind of like a room for the weekend. Oh, yes. I think we have one left here. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, boy, take this, uh, man in the luggage room, F2. All right. How's the golfing? Pretty good, pretty good. I hope you enjoy your stay, sir. Right this way. I thought I closed the door. Oh well. Hi, honey, I brought some food. What are you doing? Quit going around. I brought some food. I... Linda! Oh my God! Linda! You hey. didn't pay me! What do you mean I didn't pay you? Here's my money! Ah! I, I don't owe you no money! Please! I didn't... Ah! No! 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 Ah! Gosh, what was that? What happened? Oh, I, I don't know. I walked in and they were like this. This guy's dead. So she... I I walked in, I heard the, the, the gunshot, and... This is the first thing I, I saw. I was sitting out in there in the living room when I heard it. And it I was, I know, I was cleaning in the, in the other room there. I, I, I better, I guess I better go call the police. Yeah, you go do that. I'll look around for some clues or something okay. around here. Whoa. It's supposed to be a gun. You can still smell the smoke in it. Uh, they said that uh, they're on their way, so I'm only so I'll give you a discount on your room. Okay, but I uh, I might be next. I'm... Oh, you scared me. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know where uh, everybody is? Sounds like the places. Uh, rooms are out somewhere. Oh. I clean up a little more, and then I'm done. I told you I paid you! I know you paid me. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I paid you too much. What are you talking about? Give me my money back. I don't know. You took my money. Yeah. Gosh. Oh my gosh. She's dead. Hey you, wait, look. This is the third murder that's happened here. What kind of place are you running? Hey, hey, are you alright? You owe me money! No! I remember! I what? I lent you two hundred dollars! No, I just made it!
service. You owe me money, $500. I don't owe you nothing, bud. Sergeant, this is Detective Green. I got him. He's dead. shot to death in their Florida apartment. The murderer or murderers are still at large and the police to this moment are still searching for him. Back to you, Bob. Oh. Meanwhile, in a scientific lab in Western Florida. Oh my God, doctor, look at these results. There must be something wrong here. I checked the system today. I'm gonna to call General Higgins now. Yes, General Higgins, this is Dr. Quinn. We took some lab results on those shots. They, they were shot by a laser, and we don't have anything that advanced. It wants to be, yes? Yes, I suggest you get some help now. Goodbye. Meanwhile, in 643. What the heck was that? Um, what? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in Japan. I must test you on what you've learned today. Oh! 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 Oh!
No hay time. An alien in Beachwalk. I must go. Fort Bragg, Georgia. The next day in Florida. So I haven't seen you in a while. You're not supposed to. I'm a ninja. That's a good one there, Ninja Chunk. Sorry to keep you waiting, gentlemen. I'm General Higgins. We trapped the alien inside this apartment. Your mission is to go in and eliminate it. All right, let's go. But it's probably going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. And hold your horses.
time you put on it. I'm Ryan Kelly, and I'm sure most of you know of the Illinois basketball team. The Illinois football team often goes unnoticed and unmentioned. So we put together a little video that we'd like to show you uh, concerning the Illinois football team and some of their greater endeavors. We're the top. Everybody's pulled three thousand people away with the run. That's right, except Dan Donovan slipped out that left flash because was pretty important because 7 0 was not enough, and 13 made it different. Yet you see the hard hitting defense, Sean Turner comes over, intercepts, or they can recover because they felt they were really good. And up front is where our guys play so hard. They were hustling. That's Mel H. And Mel has just one of those sensational games today. And then here's Mel on the sack. That's good, is when you get several blue shirts around the ball. You see, every time there's a play, there are four or five people around it. Purdue had to switch quarterbacks in the second half, too. Fox had hurt his arm and couldn't take the snap. They went to TV quarterbacks. Neither of which had a great deal of success. He neither had ever played before. He was yeah, that was tough for them. I tell you, I get a great deal of credit for Purdue. In one of the years, you sure what? Best time we give it to Purdue. He goes over the top for the touchdown. This made it turn into nothing. Play is becoming a trademark of the Finding Illini defensive backfield. I think we're one of the more enthusiastic groups. Just definitely leading the Illini squad to new heights. Every week, our love is going hard. You know, they, you know, jolted them with their, their eyes are blinking. And, and it's a great feeling in the way my extra quarterback seeing them right there. It's just you and him. You're going to make a play. Into that power, power running backs, and uh, there's a time for power, but I like kids who will play another down for you. That don't like to take that kind of punch. The person behind that approach and accomplishing it for the Fighting Illini is running back coach Bucky Godbolt. I've tried the ability to, to get away from defenders. I'm real happy with the way they've progressed so far. Be more explosive uh, when they receive them. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just get this one play. Okay, boom. And then we see they're trying to go to the pass. If Marvin is playing the ball in the air, he, he's tall anyway, almost 6'3", and he just jumps right up there, makes an interception. He really has a hard on the goal line play. The blocking was superb, and of course, it was a picture perfect touchdown. Yeah, wait a minute. Today, and they've had a tough season so far, but he's really a good football coach, and I know that they were expecting And I just, uh, we just decided, I called the timeout. I said, call timeout, bring him over here. One of his, in fact, his best day ever throwing the football at Illinois. And there you see the opening of the second half. Yes, sir, right, uh, right here, we're only able to get a field goal. And again, you see the defense. Here's Marlon Primos again. And I really think that our whole and then I changed my tempo a little bit. I decided to throw call some plays that were deep throws in the third quarter. We had to win. Now, then we come back. This was designed as an underneath pass, but with great protection, Jeff had a chance to look down the field and try to turn that for the big play. There's a young man from Rockford, Illinois, the big plays. And they brought the blitz. And we tossed the ball to Keith Jones, and this is one of the best plays against the full blitz. And it's excellent blocking. He cuts against the grain. And really, it looks like a lot of people had a shot. They add up. They put a lot of pressure on the defense. And of course, this run right here, Keith breaks for the long one. The excellent, yeah. you know, excellent blocking here. And this is what happens. I think we had him worn down a little bit this time. And it just didn't add a little bit to the game. Keith lacked three yards to going over 100. Mostly the run block with Alvin Coleman, the linebackers, and defensive backs. That, that's my favorite part of the game. The 
finding an Illini defensive secondary is a close-knit group of fiery competitors with one purpose, to win. We really believed it would be like this in the, in the game. They fumbled the punts. We were in great position. I thought our offense came out and our defense played very well. We had some good setups. We had some plays that they hadn't seen. Some players felt good about them. They couldn't do a line on a trap and then Mike Bellamy is someone they do. Downs in a row for Sean, one last week against Wisconsin. Yeah, they were man to man and we used a little combination run. But then we used the power play and how he took the slides in for the second touchdown. So the first quarter. Maybe see at the very end. The great thing about our team is I don't think anyone ever quit. Throws it by an option. He's got running room. Lost the football. Looks like the Illini have it. After just shortly thereafter, and Jeff found Steve Williams coming all the way from one side of the field to the other for the touchdown pass. The end of the third quarter, and then in the fourth quarter, third down, Howard Griffith up the middle on the draw play practically. Yeah. This, is the this is the pressure we talked about, and I guess it was really the stamper who went up first. I already said I didn't want to go. You see Brian Williams chasing down Drake Bryant, and that gets tackled. You seem to get better activity out of your linebackers, too, today. Linebackers are in good position. We'll remember Stephen Jordan's devotion, enthusiasm, and talented skills for a long, long time. As an exciting mix of an explosive running attack with a dangerous aerial assault on opposing defenses. A key man in the engineering of this attack. At the same time, he's guiding these young men into a great future. I think the most important thing I believe that the discipline that it takes to play your best on the football field, something that will, you know, that complements their education and also will have great carryover to them in their career. Yeah, 
Over here, it's kind of like a little sitting room. And I still light, it's not too bright, but hey, you can fit the bulb. Oh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And over here, sir, over here. Oh. Got the bed over here, it's got the vibrating and got all the extras, you know. It's oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of, oh. Table. Eating for the snacks you get in the morning or night when it's ready, whenever you get them. Mm. So. Yeah, it's pretty nice. You got a phone and TV over there, too. Yeah, it's remote and everything. Well, you know, um, I'm going to school right down the street here at the U of I. Yeah. Yeah, my cousin's going there. Oh, yeah? Um, and this would really be perfect. It's right down the road. Yeah, yeah I have morning classes. Uh, morning classes. Do you have a car? Um, yeah, I do. It's parked outside. But, um, yeah, this would really be nice. How much are you asking for? 150 150? Um, yeah, I can swing that. Well, listen, you know, it's kind of late. You think I could maybe just sleep here tonight and then tomorrow morning move my stuff in maybe and, um, and uh, I'll sign all the papers tomorrow too. Oh, shit. Um, what's, that's, what's that? That's my wife. She, she doesn't talk too much. She's kind of quiet. You won't see her too terribly often, but I'll tell her you're here so she doesn't think that you're an invader or something. Okay. So, well, no worry. Good night. Have a good sleep. Okay. here. Bowden Ben Prime Time. New Orleans. Florida State football coach Bobby Bowden yesterday defended his decision to the most trouble in the All-American Bowl. Cornerback Deion Sanders and Plainer Sanders and Sanders showed the ball against Auburn. early the next morning. Oh, hey, how are you doing?
Just about last night around 2 o'clock, there was a pounding outside my room. And you know, I couldn't quite figure out what it was. I looked out, and I thought that you might have been down there.